Hello everyone, this is Giuseppe Sec, and in this video we're going to go over how we can get a shell on an IoT device using the UART interface. And if you're new to hardware stuff, UART is the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Uh, hardware developers, are they, they, they'll use the UART interface uh, so that they can get a shell on the device during the development process and debug stuff. And once they reach the production phase, ideally they'll either remove the UART or disable it via software, but that can add additional costs to production, so oftentimes that will not be the case, and they'll just, you know, fingers crossed that consumers won't open up the device and uh, see what's going on under, under the hood, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to go over how we can identify a UART interface, and then we'll see if we can make a connection to the UART interface. Um, and just mess around with the uh, the operating system that, that that's running on the on the device. In order to do this, we're going to need a couple of tools too. So I'm going to be leaving links in the descriptions uh, in, in case you guys want to do some shopping. Right? What we're going to need is a multimeter, and we'll need a USB to TTL adapter. That's what's going to be that's what's going to make it possible for us to interface with the UART. And then we'll either need a soldering kit, or in my case, I'm using PC Byte probes. Those are actually really nice if you if you aren't uh, if you're new to soldering, or if you just are working with something that's like a really uh, like 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 really thin testing pads or something, right? Anyway, let me just get this camera on here, and the device we are working with today is the. TP-Link Topo C210. This is an IP camera. And what's sticking out to me as a potential UART candidate is uh, this JST port right here. Now why that sticks out to me especially, uh, you can see, well, you, it's really hard to see, but there's like these four pads that I'm assuming are uh, related, that are, that are like connected to the four pins that are in the uh, JST port. Oh, and if you're not unaware of what a JST is, it's something like this guy right here, right? Um, and in my experience when working with IP cameras, if there is a 1.25 millimeter JST uh, that isn't our, that doesn't already have something plugged in, like with this or with this one, uh, usually it's going to end up being the UART. And uh, the the reason why the the four pins and four pads sticks out to me especially is because that's the minimum requirement for pins to make a uh the the minimum num uh, requirement for like the number of pins necessary to have a UART uh, like one of these is going to be ground one of these is going to be voltage and then the other two would be receive and transmit and receive and transmit are basically what what's going to the transmit is going to send out the output from like the shell of the uh, operating system and then receive is going to receive the input from like your keyboard or something like that. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that's uh, that's how we can make an educated guess based based on like what we're looking at. Right. So to test that theory, what we can do is turn the multimeter on to continuity mode. That's this little symbol here. Um, and I'm going to make it so that when we make like a full circuit, it uh, makes a sound, right? And what I'm going to do next is touch the black probe to somewhere that that, that is already grounded. Uh, that could be something like the, uh, the screws or if there's an antenna, the antenna is usually going to be grounded. And then I will be uh, touching the red probe around on these pads. And if we make a full circuit, then we know that one of those pads is grounded. So I'm just going to make a connection here with this screw. I'm just going to touch around on these pads. Okay, so this one is, this pad right here is grounded. And now we're going to see if we can figure out which one of these, if any of these pads are the receive uh, or actually the, the transmit. And so we, we, I've turned the multimeter on to the DC mode. That's the uh, V with the little dots, right? And I'm going to, uh, well, let me actually plug in the device. <laughs> and I will touch 
the black probe to the ground pad and I'm just going to touch it to the red to this pad right here and if we see the multimeter jumping around a bunch we can assume that that is the transmit pad Ooh, yeah that is jumping around a lot and what you can like the reason why we're assuming that that is transmit is because you can think about like when when Linux has a verbose boot enabled and there's just a bunch of text going around uh, we can assume that that's a lot of data that's being transmitted and, uh, uh, dur dur during the boot process and so that's why uh, that translates to like a bunch of jumping around on the multimeter but we can uh, double check this theory let me with the device by touching to a different pad during the boot process and see if that one jumps around a lot too. Uh, it's not jumping a lot and now it seems to be relatively stable too. So I'm just going to make a guess that uh, this one is transmit so that would mean that since this one is ground that these two one is going to be voltage and the other uh would have to be receive and so we'll just make a guess and let's get these pc byte probes in here and what's cool about these uh you can see that these have a uh, spring-loaded needles in them that make it possible to have just enough pressure applied to them that you can make a solderless connection. So I'm going to connect this one to ground and then the yellow wire to transmit and we haven't figured out which of the other two is receive yet, but I'm just going to make a guess that it's this one. Okay. And these wires, you can't see, but um, here we go. They're connected to a USB to TTL adapter and I'm just plugging that into my laptop and then get this camera off in my terminal i'm just going to be running minicom and you can install that uh that that, that should be in, that should be uh in the debian and an arch based uh repos as well this is just a program for making connections to serial interfaces and and there we go there's the login prompt for the device pretty cool but we don't have any credentials yet um so what we can do if we reboot the device let's see what that boot process looks like <clears throat> So something that we could do is we could try to halt the boot process and enter the bootloader uh, prompt or, or shell and try to mount the file system from, from there. Uh, but that's a, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm just trying to show here. And what I ended up doing instead um, so in this GitHub repo, this is some research that some people were reverse engineering the previous model of the Tapo. This was the C200 and in the issues here, somebody ended up mentioning that they had found the credentials for the shell. Here we go. They ended up finding out that the credentials were SLP Realtek. Now, if we just try uh, root as the login and then we do SLP Realtek, 
the login is incorrect. But what I ended up doing, I was able to get the firmware of the device during a uh, firmware update. Hmm. That should be a uh, squash FS root Etsy. And then I was able to find uh, hard coded credentials in the Etsy password. So, what I ended up doing, um, I made a hashcat uh, command to try and crack the, uh, the, to crack this hard, these hard coded credentials. Let me see if I can get this here. And with the knowledge that the previous model used the SLP as the uh, prepended to the, the password, I made a guess that it was going to be uh, the same for this password as well. And it was something like that, a command like that. And so you can see we had the SLP prepended to the to, to all guesses against the uh, the the hash, right? And then all these other ones are, this is where these other characters here are, what, are what's going to be randomly generated and tested against the hash. Uh, what ended up happening, it took like maybe 30 minutes or so to crack the hash and the password ended up being something like that. S-L-P-L-Z-G-J-I-P-C. Anyway. Let's try that again. And there we go, we are logged in to the shell. Uh, what? Yeah, we, we, okay, we're in the root, so let's go to the actual root. There we go. So yeah, that is um how we can get a shell, and that's how I was able to get credentials to the console. Um, going over, like, mounting the file system from the bootloader prompt, may, maybe I can go into that. I, I, I've been currently unsuccessful in trying to get that to work with this specific one because they've made some uh, custom changes to, to the uh, bootloader. But yeah, hope that was uh, interesting.